Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be with you uh, and to talk a little bit about ASA and to integrate what ASA does in what you've heard uh, this afternoon, uh, this morning. Sorry, I'll get it right. Um, and uh, in a sense, the, the presentation has reflected ASA's uh, style, which is to actually get stuck in and do the hard work and try and do something uh, to... to, uh, to to build a base for understanding African inequality in a very careful uh, way and, um, and then talk about what we can say about African inequality, but, but uh, not shy away from the hard work. But then not also, also not shy away then from the ambition of trying to explain that inequality. So that hasn't been a strong feature of our presentation this afternoon, but you need the basis of, of good data to do that. And I guess uh, ACES, it's been around since 2018, and its hallmark has been to build these data sets and to build some, some tools. So the, 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 what you've seen when, when people spoke about the ASA perspective on inequality and its trends in each of the three country contexts, um, th those were, were built in partnership with the national statistical offices in each of those three countries. In fact, the South African report is, a, is, an official, is the first South African official release on inequality ever. Uh, well, I don't know about ever, but uh, to, as the record, somebody, some hi historian might find some clay tablet somewhere. Um, uh, but, but that close working relationship on the data and the data quality and into the policy space, into the SDG measurement space. So we've had some impact on what, what the countries add to their, their inequality reporting on SDG 10. Uh, given the texture of the inequality, it makes sense for some countries to be tracking lots of things. And you, you've seen we don't just do income and expenditure, we do multidimensional uh, inequality. And, and then the art of the work program is, okay, but how do those multidimensional inequalities intersect to reproduce and to produce the levels of inequality that we see? And there's a particular focus in ASA actually on, on the, the, the dynamics of, of inequality between cross-sectional time periods because we have two very, very good panel data sets in, in the continent, the Ghanaian uh, socioeconomic panel uh, and in South Africa, the National Income Dynamics Study panel, which have to be the two best uh, panel surveys on the continent. Um, uh, and then we've also accompanied that work with a series of uh, the commitment to equity, the benefit incidence exercises. We've done them in each of our contexts. We've done them with the Ministries of Finance or, or the National Statistical Office as the bridge then into the policy discussion with something to say uh, and uh, in order to stimulate the national dialogue. Um, and then we, we've worked quite hard to try and increase the accessibility of the data for the national discussions of, of inequality to, to take hold and to stimulate the national discussions. Um, so as you can tell, uh, th there's a lot of sweat in there, but it's, uh, that, that's the way we've chosen to go. Um, of course, we want a, a key... Foundation, founding principle of ASA really is that there's a lot of uh, th there's a lot of discussion about African inequality and its growing importance in on the global stage and African poverty as well, um, but a lot of that discussion doesn't actually embed itself in in Africa with African researchers and with an interface into the African policy making uh, fraternity. Um, and so we do have the aspirations to, to be talking about African inequality in general as well. We just started with, with uh, our, our core basis. And, um, and it's, this is a key point, actually. If you look at the, the graph that I've got here, um, the, these are, are measures of African uh, inequality on the continent but by country uh, that are produced, one by the World Bank, um, and uh, you can see what, what came up before, it was on uh, Muna's uh, slide, um, was uh, the, the extreme inequality in Southern Africa. It's, the, it's by miles the highest inequality uh, region 
in the world. Um, and in fact, if you take that out or adjust for it in, in Africa's inequality trends, then Africa falls from being right up there with Latin America to the middle. That doesn't mean that's the accurate characterization. It just means you've got to be careful. There's heterogeneities across the continent that are crucial. Um, uh, second, th there's another picture here that's derived from, th from the uh, World Inequality Database in 2019 that, that doesn't just use the, the uh, Living Standards Measurement Surveys of the World Bank, but uses a combination of those surveys and fiscal, na fiscal data and national accounts. Uh, to produce a picture of African inequality. And it doesn't, I guess, take my, take my uh, word for it. You can look at the PowerPoint later. Uh, they don't map exactly. They, they're roughly the same, but there are many differences. And in particular, notice the fact that at the, at the top end of the continent, or there are pockets on the continent where, the, where there's no survey data, but there are estimates from from there. But these are the databases that are being pushed into the big discussions in the UN around about African inequality and what we need to do to tackle it. And so these differences are very consequential and it's not very, very comforting actually. To come back to my point about grounding inequality in, in the for in the policy processes, but also in the dialogues within countries and then across the continent. Um, it, it, it's not appropriate, actually, that, the, that these high-level discussions are, are almost absent of Africans, African voices. And the data differences are consequential too. So who's talking in what forum about African inequality? Uh, and we, just, we don't just want to... Uh, do what I'm doing now, do missionary work, but we actually want to grind up, then, okay, we, we, we need to come with something to say into that space. And you've seen a bit of that today, uh, but not much uh, about the multidimensional work that we've done. Right, and so I just reproduced a slide from the South African presentation that, that shows a paper that we've written recently using demographic and health survey data actually and some asset measures that we have developed ourselves to measure asset inequality. Um, and uh, that's just to make the point that the objective of the exercise is to explain inequality and to, to be able to focus strategies to overcome inequality. Okay, there's a lot of missionary work, but I think that's okay, uh, given all the data stuff we've had. Um, uh, I just want to make my point by a little advertorial to a session this afternoon where, where, uh, uh, where we'll be talking about some work that we've done uh, using the, the WID data, just to say it's possible, it's not that we don't have the skills to use these data sets, but we, we, we want to ask ourselves the question, should we be using these data sets? Are they telling us stuff that's useful? So we did use the, the WID data in this case, and this is, this is the famous... Uh, Re revisited elephant diagram, uh, updated a little bit where, where the elephant went on a diet or something, lost, lost the middle. Um, and uh, um, what we did was add Africa to that. And, it's, and it looks impressive, right? And it is impressive. And, and it's important too, if it's, if it's true. Right? And we're assuming it's true, and we're just making a point here, a very important point. Where does Africa sit in this world picture? When you pull all the data and you do the world distribution, well, you can see these incredibly high shares of, of Africa in the, in the bottom percentiles of the distribution. And it, it helps you, uh, well, we'll tell you why that's important this afternoon. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to make the point that one of the reasons we're getting into this, these data quality issues is so that when we come into the international discussion, uh, we're the respected voice. That's what we want to be. And you've got to earn that. Here's another, uh, the, um, this is about the African inequality by percentiles, and it just shows a very high top end. In fact, the top end jumps so steeply it disappears off your slide, uh, right at the 99th point nine percentile. Um, okay, so how many, how am I doing? Uh, uh, thank you. You're giving me a lot of latitude here. That's dangerous. Uh, anyway, so th let's wrap that back. That's about ASA. 
but it helps, I think, ground uh, the detailed work. So we started with the hard work, and then we're coming back out again uh, now to, tell you, to, to try and show you, well, why is this important? Because we developed these country diagnostics of inequality. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, there are a number of international comparable data sets. The world, I showed you one from the World Bank. I showed you another one from, from the, uh, the, the World uh, Inequality Database. And then obviously the weird one that's been around forever, for a long, long time, um, particularly designed to get the trends right. And if you think about the work on, on monitoring SDG progress and things like that, the levels are important, of course, in, in terms of the texture and what, you know, and, 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 and then the texture of inequality is important too. But for the SDG monitoring process, you've got to get the trends right in whatever you're measuring. And so uh, it's a particularly unique space, I think, for the WID data in these national discussions is it focuses so hard on the trends. Um, Okay, some key points that came out across our, our country presentations. Uh, so, so this is a very fruitful dialogue. I guess that's what, what I'm trying to say. And we really do appreciate uh, the, the joint project uh, with you and UWIDA on this. Um, and uh, just to raise some of the issues that come out uh, in the comparison. Well, obviously, there's a focus on income inequality. And it turns out the South African income data is, is, is there. Uh, the, the, the other, um, in Kenya and Ghana, the income data doesn't look particularly good. Um, and it's a, p a bit of a puzzle. If you think back to the Latin American discussions that we've been having, right? The, the Latin American discussion is income, and they've even got harmonized income across the whole continent, and it's unleashed an incredible amount of really good research. Right? And, and it goes to some policy issues. You do need income data. You might not only need income data, but you need it. Um, anyway, uh, so, so the income, that's one of the issues. Um, and the comparison of, of income versus consumption. And I guess one of the, the key wins, the, one of the reasons we wanted this project, actually, is the, the fact that, that Africans uh, produce uh, consumption data, mostly driven because the focus has been on poverty reduction, right, in the continent. Um, it, uh, it's not obvious, there are measurement issues with consumption data too, but nonetheless, this mapping between income and consumption data for WID is important, and I guess th what we're getting out of our country studies is that um, is that the, the WID data is combining income and consumption and actually earning sometimes and uh, when we bring our multidimensional perspective to that we can actually help a lot to the series. Uh, it's, it's not clear that income and consumption should be put together rather than exp the relationship explained in any country context. They're not necessarily exactly the same concept uh, but what? What are we supposed to do? I don't think, in the South African context, we saw no major violence is done. Um, in in, uh, in uh, Ghana and in Kenya, it's not so much a question of violence. The South African context, the data is used in the WID uh, series. In the Ghana and in Kenyan context, it's the, they're adjusted for Cote d'Ivoire, actually. Uh, it drives a lot of what you see, and the gap between income and consumption, etc., becomes very important. Um, um, so, so just interrogating these concepts, that's what you get out of these country studies, and it's, I think it's incredibly important, actually. Um, so, uh, and that's the punchline, really. I think, I think that bringing the whole analysis of inequality to bear on, on the WID data is, is the way to triangulate. How are we going to decide at the end of the day about what's going on in Ghana other than bringing our full understanding of what we've got, consumption, income for sure, but the other multidimensional measures also count and help in the validation. Um, Okay, I'm going to, am I out now, I think, right? Okay, so I'll, I, I'm not going to get, I gave you the high level on the data. I think there are some, um, some lessons. I, I told you about the income versus consumption. Um, and uh, 
and the fact that, you, you know, it does seem that we need to think very, very hard. I, I think uh, uh, Takwanisa put it quite nicely, actually, that we really do, we need income data, but we need to think really, really hard about how to measure it. And it's a bit of a puzzle to me why, why we don't seem to be doing very well. Uh, to some extent, I think it's because we haven't taken it very seriously across the continent, actually. That's my, uh, that's one of my views. Um, so coming into this, we get the, the WID, and, and I think, you know, 20,000 observations, maybe that's too many, but uh, these country studies then can really help that. The WID re companion reduces this to one preferred estimate per country per year. So that's then a very nice uh, vantage point to get away from the 20,000 to interrogating uh, that preferred estimate. Um, and obviously, I think the, 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 the different countries give different value add in comparing the estimate in any given year. So in South Africa, we do have multiple estimates of the same year. We've got a lot to bring to that, that comparison in the South African context. And it is part of the, the harmonized uh, wood series. In, um, in Ghana and Kenya, uh, we don't have that. But we can, what we can do then is, is bring a lot of value add in terms of the type of uh, standardization and smoothing that is used in the WID data for African contexts. I think that's what we've got to bring. Um, so, um, I, I said all of that, luckily for you guys. Uh, so Takwanisa showed us the slide. Um, and uh, I just had one key point to make from that. It, in some senses, the, the WID uh, data needs to pick um, linked link series. If you're gonna if you're gonna do trends and changes over time, you need to pick like a base year in a CPI almost, right? You've got to pick a year to link the series. And one of the things the South African de uh, example makes clear is that uh, actually the choice of the anchor for the link is really important. Uh, if we'd picked uh, 2015 instead of 2010, we, we can produce a, sli a slightly different uh, graph. But in general, the South African case fits pretty well, and that's not an accident. It's involved in the thing, but it's, it's still a sophisticated relationship. Okay, so we've got work to be done as part of the project. We're wrapping it up now uh, through to the end of the year, um, and, uh, and really wrapping it up in a way that tries to integrate the narrative of inequality in each of our country contexts, and then one paper that really looks at the cross-country African work that's done uh, out of that. Um, and these are all key issues for, for ASA. And I'll just end with a little inspirational message. I think this is uh, absolutely crucial work. I don't know how inspirational that is. You need a nice picture or something. Uh, or, or, uh, but, um, you know, the, the, to, to end where I started, the discussion, understanding African inequalities and what can be done about them and why they're so important in terms of how they stifle countries at the national level, but citizens within countries as well, uh, it's, it's such a crucial agenda, actually, and, um, and the, the, you know, the data are not great, but they're not, they, they are data. They just have to be used appropriately to tell the story. Thank you.